One of the most common questions I get from viewers of the channel is about learning shell scripting, especially those that are new to Linux, just switching to Linux, and they really want to dive a little deeper into Linux, and they want to learn some basics. They want to learn the basics of the Bash shell and Bash scripting, and I think one of the best tools to play around with to learn Bash scripting is actually Dmenu. For those that are not familiar with what Dmenu is, it's basically, most people think of it as a run launcher. It's more than a run launcher. If I Hit this key binding here I get a run launcher here at the top of my screen and I can start typing for a program that's installed on my system like Alacrity I could hit enter and it launches the Alacrity terminal but dmenu is more than just a run launcher dmenu actually you can pipe any information you want to into dmenu and dmenu will display it as a menu and because the possibilities are endless of what you can do with it, uh, especially once you get into scripting with dmenu. I think it's a really nifty little tool for you guys to start using to practice your shell scripting. So in preparation for making this video, I knew I was going to make this video uh, several days ago, and what I wanted to do is I went into some of my personal dmenu scripts, and I started cleaning them up a little bit, getting them ready for you know, displaying to the public. And what I did is I actually created a repository over on my GitLab. If you go to uh, GitLab slash DWT1 slash DM scripts for DMenu scripts, not very original. This is a repository I created. I've got, I don't know, seven or eight of my DMenu scripts listed in that repository for you guys to check out. Uh, I'm not a programmer by trade, so uh, there may be errors in the code. Some of the scripts are very quick and dirty scripts that I just threw together, just mainly as proof of concepts. So let me show you some of these scripts. I'll show you a little bit of the code, how the code works, and I'll show you, of course, the scripts in action. So let me switch back over to my desktop, and I open Doom Emacs here. This is my uh, text editor of choice these days, Doom Emacs. I'm going to toggle on big font mode so you guys can see really big font. And I'm going to navigate to this directory here, DM Scripts, and I'll just open it up in Dear Ed, which is the built-in file manager here in Emacs, and I can navigate down, and I have several scripts here. I think the one that is the simplest as far as the concept is this one here that I call dmconf, and it's very, it may look complicated, but it's actually dead simple. This thing, literally, I could have wrote it in like two minutes had it not involved so much typing. <laughs> like, it really involves this declaring an options array so declare dash a we're going to declare an array and we're, we're going to name it options equals and then each line is an option in this array and then we're going to pipe all of these options into dmenu now let me show you this in action so let me hit the key combination for this here and you see i have this run prompt that says edit config and it lists uh, everything that was in that array. So let me escape out of that and I'll show you once again, this is the array. Now, dollar sign home in all caps, of course, expands to my actual path to my home directory, which is slash home slash DT. So let me do that again. You see dollar sign home is replaced by home slash DT in all of these. Now, again, I didn't put a lot of thought and effort into this script. It's a very quick and dirty script that I just threw together kind of fast, but my thinking behind it was I wanted to create this array, and in this array, all of these options, I wanted each option to have three fields. I wanted the name of the program that I wanted to edit that particular config file for, and then the second field is going to be a dash, and then the third field is going to be the path to the config file that I want to be able to edit. I know that's, that may seem a little strange, but what I'm going to do is later I'm going to, through the magic of the awk command, awk is a command line program that allows you to pull certain fields out of text, you know, I'm going to pull the first column out of this later, and I'm going to pull the third column out of this later, which is the path to the individual config files themselves. So let's get past the uh, array, because really, like 80% of the script is the comments at the top, me setting a variable for the text editor I want to use, because of course these config files need to open in a text editor, and I'm going to want them to open in Emacs, so that's why I set this variable later. We'll use that variable in a bit. And then most of this is declaring the uh, options array here, and then listing all of the config 
config files that I commonly edit. So I created that list. And then down here, I have uh, piping the above array into D menu. So I created choice. So this variable is going to be called choice. And it's going to run the command print F. Uh, print F. We're going to print everything in the options array. That's what the at sign it means it means we want all members of the options array printed out and I want you to pipe that into D menu dash I for searching for case insensitively dash L for I want it to be a vertical list and I want the number of lines to be 20 dash P is the prompt flag for D menu meaning what prompt do you want and then in single quotes this is the name of the prompt edit config so again if I do the key binding to launch that you see edit config as the prompt you see the array now that's not very useful until you also finish the script and tell it what to do when you select an option. So what happens when I select, for example, the very first thing in the array, which is alacrity. It's already highlighted my alacrity config. Well, what I want you to do is if choice, remember choice was the variable we created for everything being piped into D menu. So if choice equals quit, the very last thing in the array, I called quit. I wanted a quit option just in case people want it out without doing anything. So if the choice is quit, then I want you to echo program terminated and an exit one. So I just want you to exit out. Now, if they choose something that's not quit, so else if choice, then I want you to do this. I want you to print the choice, meaning if I choose ZSH, for example, print that entire line. But what I want you to do is I want you to pipe that into awk and I want you to print dollar sign, capital N, capital F. That means print the last field. The last field is that field. <laughs> I only want the path, right? So the fields are separated by spaces by default in awk. So ZSH is a field. The dash or the minus symbol that's a field and the path is a field so I wanted alt to print just the last field for us now what do I want it to do with that path to that uh, config file well I want you to then run the command dollar sign DM editor that's the variable we set at the very top DM editor is basically my command to launch Emacs so I want you to run Emacs path to the config and that really is the script. Like, there's really nothing else to the script. It was very quick and dirty. It's very easy. If I wanted to, I could scroll down here and go to my DWM config.def.h. If I hit enter, it launches it inside Emacs. It looks like I got a maybe an error inside my config.def.h. I'm not sure what that is. Let's try a, a different file. Go to my uh, Doom Emacs config.el. We'll launch that. And there is that. And we'll close that. So very simple script, but it solved a problem that I, I wanted to solve. You know, I just wanted a quick way to quickly open some of the common config files that I edit all the time. So that was the purpose of this script, why I named it dmconf for config. And let's uh, check out one of the other little scripts that I've uh, played around with here lately. I, I created this one the other day called DM search. Uh, years ago, there was a, a really neat little script called SurfRaw that was created by Julian Assange that allowed you to search various search indices on the internet. That script hasn't been updated in years, and uh, a lot of the options that are built into that script now are uh, no longer working. They're, they're links that are dead. So I just wanted to create a, a simple little search script. So the format of this is very similar to the last script. I, I basically <laughs> typically use the same kind of format. I just did a variable at the top where I made a variable for the browser I want to use because this is going to be searching the web. So I want to search the web obviously using a web browser. Uh, the last script, of course, we needed a text editor because we were editing config files. So I set DM browser equals the brave browser. And then I created another array, declare dash A for array. And then I named the array once again, options. I'm not very original with these names. And then once again, I wanted to have three fields in each option. The first field is just the name of the search engine that we're searching, in this case, Amazon. And then the next field is, again, the dash or the minus sign. And the third field is going to be the URL for the search engine. And it needs to be a search URL minus the keyword that it searches for. So if I was searching for, I don't know, DistroTube, this URL it would actually read out this. So what I need is all of these URLs to be in the format where the, it's the URL, you know, searching for a keyword or a query uh, search 
And I need it to not include, of course, the keyword because when the keyword will constantly change, we're going to add the keyword using D menu. I've got all of these various search indices in this array. You know, again, it's very easy. This was not complicated. The complicated part is going to each search engine <laughs> and searching for something and getting the correct URL. But scripting it is very, very easy. And then at the end, I've got some while loops. While, kind of like if, you know, if, then do this. If this is true, then do this. While is, while this is true do this and just keep doing it that, that's what a basically a while loop is i don't want to get way off into explaining that but it's uh, not terribly different than what we saw in the last script and i have this here while engine we're going to have a variable called engine here in a minute do this and what i'm going to do is i created this variable engine list and what i want you that to do is I wanted to print all of the options. So every member of the options array, I want you to once again pipe it into D menu with the same flags as the script we looked at before, except the prompt is now choose search engine. So if I do the key binding to run this script, you see choose search engine. And then once again, every member of that options array, which is the search engine hyphen, and then the URL. Now I don't really need the URL displayed in this menu. I could actually clean that up, but it's fine being there for now the next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to take that search engine list which is once again this entire list here I wanted to awk the last field so that's what this is I want the last field which is the URL and then I also wanted to awk the first field which is just the name of the engine because I'm going to use that in the next D menu prompt because I'm going to have this query down here query and then we're going to d menu and then the prompt is going to say searching engine what is engine well engine is going to be uh, taking the engine list and awking the first field so if i happen to choose youtube the next prompt is going to say searching youtube let me show you that so let me this is the first prompt where we're getting all the members of the array let me search for youtube i'm going to hit enter and the next prompt says searching youtube what am i searching youtube for I'm going to search for DistroTube if I can type. And you guys didn't see it, but off camera here, let me show you guys this. It actually just searched uh, in my Brave browser for DistroTube on YouTube. So that's just briefly what I've done with a couple of scripts here. Of course, that was a search engine script. You guys saw the previous script, which was a script where I could edit config files that I edit on a regular basis. Let me show you just briefly one more that I've been working on. I called this one DM Red because it's for Reddit. It's going to be using DMenu as a way to view Reddit using a command line Reddit viewer called Radio, which I think I did a video about Radio a while back. Anyway, uh, this one gets a little more complicated because you, what are you going to do? First, you have to choose a subreddit from the options array here, which I called uh, not options this time. Subreddit underscore list was what I named the array. And then what happens when you choose one of these subreddits? Well, I want you to give me a list of posts, uh, the latest, I, I don't know, 20 posts from that subreddit. OK, what happens when you select a post from that subreddit? Well, I want to you to display the main message from that post I selected. So I've already got three different things going on as far as you get D menu and then you choose something and then you get a second D menu. You choose something and then you get a third D menu, etc. And I've. This is a, very much a work in progress. There's probably a lot more I'm eventually going to try to add to this thing. But right now what I've got, do I have a key binding for it? Yes, I do. You see the very first prompt, choose a subreddit. Let me go down and I want to choose r slash command line. And then I get a second D menu, last 20 posts on r slash command line. And I want to read, oh, actually I want to read that very first post. It says uh, the new shell, a new type of shell. I like the new shell. Let me read this post about it. And if I hit enter, uh, it should have piped that message into a Zenity dialog box. And the reason I'm piping it into a dialog box is because by default, you don't have text wrapping in D menu, so you can't really read a, a lengthy post in D menu. You have to pipe it into something else, you know, open it with a, a text editor or, or, or a web browser or whatever. I just wanted it in a Zenity dialog box, but it doesn't look like there was any text there. Let me try that once again. And this time I'm going to go to the Arch Linux subreddit and I'm going to read, uh, we'll read the frequently asked questions from the Arch subreddit. 
Okay, and this is a more normal kind of post. Maybe there wasn't any text in the post I selected before, but you can see it gets piped out into this Zenity dialog box, which allows me to easily copy that text if I wanted to, or, you know, if I don't want to do anything, I could just cancel, or I think escape also works. If I escape out of it, it exits out of that part of the script. Anyway, I don't want to go over every single script that I had in this. Uh, just very briefly on camera, I will show you them in action. So I had a scrot. Uh, D menu script. I called it DM Scrot. It actually uses MAME. MAME is a command line screenshot utility and I gave this thing a ton of options as far as uh, taking a Scrot full screen or just the window I'm currently on or I could select a region. I could copy uh, to a clipboard. I could take a screenshot of monitor one, monitor two, monitor three. I could copy a screenshot of monitor one, two, three, etc. So there's a lot of options in this menu. Anyway, I just hit enter and you know and I get a, a screenshot and the screenshots actually get posted to a uh, screenshot folder in my home folder. Unless, of course, I choose one of the copy options and then it just copies that image to a clipboard that I could then use to paste into, I don't know, GIMP or whatever it is I need to paste an image into. Uh, the other ones I have, I had uh, this one here, which is just a kill menu. You see the prompt says search for process to kill. It uses the standard PS command, a standard Linux command line utility to search for processes. And if I happen to choose one, it will ask me, do I want to kill it? For example, uh, maybe I want to kill, uh, let me see something safe to kill here, uh, PyCom. And it's asking me, do I really want to kill it? It says kill, and then the number of the process, and then the name of the process, PyCom. If I hit yes, it just runs the, the kill command on PyCom. But I do have the option to choose no <laughs> to back out of it if it's a process I don't want to kill. And another one I did was this one here, which is just a simple shutdown uh, menu so I can log out, I can lock the screen, reboot, shut down, suspend, quit. So if I wanted to, well I'll show you the lock screen. That's a safe one to do while recording. That locks the screen until I start typing my password. And if I type my password correctly, you know, it unlocks. That uses a suckless screen locker called S-Lock or SLOCK. I'm not exactly sure how it's pronounced. I actually did a video about S-Lock a while back. So if you guys are wanting to learn some shell scripting, I strongly advise you to start playing around with something like Dmenu, or you could also do this with Rofi. You can pipe things into the Rofi run launcher. Uh, Dmenu is very simple to use, though. That's why I recommended it. It's just a fantastic program anyway. But, you know, well, do what I did. You know, that search engine script was a problem I wanted to solve. That's why I wrote that script. Find a problem that you want to solve and make it happen with some basic shell scripting and then piping it into Dmenu. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Absy Dallas, Gabe, Lou, Mitchell, Alan, Akami, Arch5530, Chuck, David, the other, David, Dylan, Gregory, Lewis, Paul, Scott, Wes, Willie, some other people. I don't know. I, I hope I get the names right. I <laughs> also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. I would read the names, but there's just too many darn names on that list. Uh, the DistroTube channel is sponsored by the community, and if you'd like to support my work, please look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.